Hello, good morning and welcome to the Amakala Game Reserve down on the east coast of South Africa. We're in frontier country and we've been able to catch up with, yes, you guessed it, the three amigos. We're just seeing one there. It seems to be the leader of the pack with the collar on. My name is Ralph Kirsten and on the camera I've got Morgan. Hello. Good Morgan and good Morgan to all of you once more. Now, I think these cheetah are going to hunt today. They were a little bit on the hunt yesterday, but it was very hot. It's a little bit cooler this morning, and I think we're in for a good chance of seeing them hunt. The reports are that they were just recently chasing some kudu, and I think that's the reason why there is a bit of panting going on with um, the one that I call the leader of the pack. The little bit older of the three amigos, I think uh, one or two months older, is this individual. And it seems to be the one that does lead them. So whatever this one does, the other two seem to follow. They're in that thicket there somewhere. And I'm just hoping that it doesn't disappear off into the shade and we lose sight completely. Which I think is just about to happen. And we've uh, got some other visitors, which I'd love to show you here. Not too far away, and pretty close to the vehicle, if anything. I am zoomed all the way out. I can't zoom any further out, just to give you an idea of how close they really are to the vehicle here. So this is a lovely little treat to have. just having a look carefully if you look at the uh, if you look at the legs I know that there are lots of shadows and things like that but if you look at those uh, that back right leg it definitely looks like these rhino have maybe been down to Scotia Dam there's definitely a, a wet a wet water line there um, so remember with those mud wallows kind of drying up I would say that the next best bet for this area right where we are now is just to plonk themselves right down in Scotia Dam. Look at that. That is the perfect shot of the butts of a rhino. I nailed it. I know that's what all of you were hoping to see today. Starbuck, why are black rhinos so reclusive? Um, that's just uh, their behavior. That's just their natural instincts in terms of, um, you know, how, how they live their lives. Um, Oh wow, let me just pan to the side here. There's an ostrich absolutely bolting its way along here. Look at its feathers getting blown in the wind. It's upsetting the zebra as well. Yeah, that was a nice little bit of uh, action there. So just to get back to our question uh, in terms of uh, the behavior of black rhinos, it's, that's kind of just ingrained in, 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 in terms of who you know a black rhino is um, so first of all I think we've got to take into consideration that behavior that they naturally are um, slightly more nervous um, than than what a white rhino would be secondly we need to remember habitat differences black rhinos really love that thick habitat think of the bottom of a of a steep valley um, you know, something like that, whereas your, your white rhinos prefer this more open area. So obviously, with the black rhinos moving around in that denser vegetation, it makes it harder to find them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it happening? Come on. <gasps> that wasn't very impressive, but it's fine. We'll give you that point. Try again. Do it. Do it. Do it. Get us a catfish. A big, fat 
catfish now, of course, you know, they do go for the smaller birds. You can see it's got... Oh, it's got something! Jeez, we are just on a hunting frenzy today. You won, Crystal? You guys were on it. You chose the correct heron. Well, perhaps the other one was also successful in the meantime. Oh! <gasps> Oh my goodness! This is literally like the fifth or sixth dude. No wonder you're so poofy. Calm down. It's not like you're going into hibernation or something. You will eat Gowrie Dam empty. Um, what? I mean, I know it's not a big fish. It's a tilapia, but still... Well, you definitely chose the correct one to be observing. I don't know if the other one is this successful. The zoomies that is helping us out, Sue, she was just saying there are so many babies and it really is such a glorious time of the year. Of course, buffaloes can have their young all year round, but you'll see them specifically even more so give birth during the summer months, just like a lot of the other herbivores, there's a lot of food around in the summertime, a lot more water, and so it really does help them. Oh, that baby is a pocket size. Oh my goodness. And of course, these guys that we see are very water dependent, so they need to drink a lot of water. But as I say, I think this is mostly just to <laughs> to cool off and specifically with the wounded ones. I think this is really helping them a lot. From myself, Lisa, your waterhole naturalist. Thank you so much. <laughs> From Rolf all the way in Amakala. Thank you so, so much. And of course, from Nick, our photo naturalist in Kareja. Thank you. We really appreciate all of you and once again as i say it's always such a privilege spending time with you and uh, just hearing all of your questions and comments and making our minds think a little too you really do ask very questions but very good questions but i'm going to leave you with this beautiful buffalo bull and i will see you tomorrow